This week, we're talking about a new line of performance parts from Honda and how you could own the Batmobile. Plus, Kia's new pickup, a surprisingly close F1 championship, and a rhino made to fight a raptor. But first, rest in peace, Irwindale Speedway. Welcome to the Big Three. Welcome back to Big Three, everybody. My name is Nolan Sykes. Joining me, as always, this week, Joe Weber and Max Maddox. Hey. Gentlemen. Hello. Yeah. I couldn't think of anything intimidating to say with this bat. Uh, I just Joe the- is uh, <laughs> waving a bat around yeah. for our audio listeners. Oh, you want to play Pepper? Oh, we can play Pepper. <laughs> um, how was your weekend, guys? I have, I have some, I have, I have some news. Oh, do I have you? Some stuff. Nolan. Oh, whoa! What is this? <laughs> whoa. I got eloped this weekend. You got eloped. Yeah, uh, we went to Tucson. Uh, Tucson. We already have a baby together, so it's not a huge deal. But we got eloped, and now I'm a married guy. Yeah, and that's the that's that. Congrats, thank you. you. Got eloped. Yeah, nice. Couple of ring brothers over here. Oh, also, <laughs> this is uh, maybe more dangerous than exciting, but I found out because we had a gas leak because of a, an earthquake that I had been crawling through in our crawl space underneath our house. I had been crawling through a <laughs> nest of black widows like over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the gas guy came out and he was like, oh, yeah, you got a leak. But also, I'm not going in there because there's a million black widows. <laughs> That's, the gas didn't take care of them, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. Right. no. My, um, I haven't gotten mail for the last three weeks or so. And I found out there's a family of black widows living in my mailbox. And oh, I God. believe my uh, postal worker is aware of the situation. That would, that would so. explain it. Yeah. They're, if you don't mess with them, they're not bad. Dude, I was watching, there's this movie called uh, Infested. It's a French horror movie where this, like, apartment building gets taken over by super spiders. And I was watching that in my old apartment. And then after the movie ends, as it ends, I feel something fall on my oh. arm. It's big-ass spider. Oh, no. A freak of <laughs> out. Whoa. Um, but, I, you know, normally, though, I love spiders. They are guardians. Uh, they keep uh, they keep the, the, the house free of other insects that are mm-hmm. worse than spiders. It's interesting that you say spiders are guardians because the cleveland guardians who used to be the cleveland indians their original name was the cleveland spiders wow that's a terrible name for a baseball team i think, <laughs> I think it's pretty <laughs> a sick. spider wearing eight gloves that's kind of fun <laughs> that's pretty cute uh i uh well first of all congratulations joe on, on the elopement yeah uh that's very cool ring ring guys now oh yeah <laughs> ring brothers um <laughs> I also went to a wedding this weekend. Oh, yeah. uh, congratulations, Cody and Tia. We were out in Pozo, California. But uh, to keep it somewhat automotive related, machinery related, Cody's gift to us as groomsmen was a ride in a helicopter after the ceremony. Whoa. Yeah. So he, Cody builds fences. That's what he does, like all over the county. And he, like, knew this. He had done a bunch of work for this guy that owns, like, a helicopter, helicopter company. Dude owns, like, eight choppers. Whoa. He's like, hey, like, my wedding's coming up. Can we figure something out? So the dude hooks his, hooks him up, hooks us up with a helicopter ride from the ceremony at Cody's family's ranch over to the reception area. That's really fun. Dude, it was so sick. Is I, it your first helicopter? Actually, no. It's my second time being in a chopper. The wow. first time was in high school. We did the thing called Every 15 Minutes. It was like a simulate. It's like a simulation of like a drunk driving accident on your football field, basically. And it's like to be like, hey, kids, don't drink and drive. Your classmates will die, you know, like that sort of thing. Were you like, I'll play the dead guy? I was one of the <laughs> uh, the uh, messed up kids. Uh, yeah, I was like splayed out on the hood of this car oh on our football God. field. Like ambulances come, like emergency services come to the football field, and they do like a whole thing. And then like a CHP helicopter landed on the field, took me up, and that was pretty neat. But this That's time sick. was like, this time around was way sicker because the pilot – was like doing banking turns oh, and stuff. Like oh, man. He was it was trying stuff. It was pretty sick. I was <laughs> definitely very worried. Yeah. Um, because I just feel like pilots love to show off, and I was like, I don't need to be in a news story, you know, going down. But it was sick. Yeah. You can't fly a helicopter without trying a few things. Yeah, it was. You know? It was sick. Well, one of the time, like we were going back to, we we're going to the reception area, and they, they like landed on this field next to this winery that we were at. Um. But I just, like, see this hill, and there's, like, the, this rock outcropping with, like, these two spires. And I was like, huh, we're definitely going towards that right oh, now. Man. And, like, it was, like, coming up fast. We're going, like, 120 miles an hour. Jeez. And I'm like, yeah, we're, he's definitely this flying. Is Apache? <laughs> uh, no, I forget what it was, but it was, like, pretty quick helicopter. Yeah. Um, 
And he just like flies, not like through the spires, but like right over them. And he's like, oh, field goal. And I was like, (laughs) pilots, dude, I don't, I don't need this. Yeah. Yeah, But it was sick though, regardless. And then right before we landed, we like, but buzz the tower so fly over everybody at the reception over this field and then he goes up and does like this crazy oh my god b- banking no. turn like 180 and you like at the top of that you like feel weightless because yeah. all your momentum that's scary and, that, and i'm just like looking down at the ground as i'm feeling this i'm like yeah just holding my breath and then I, as you like dude after he, uh, after kobe levels I'm up. Like, i know dude i'm never gonna get dude, in a that helicopter. morning was so foggy too over in the central coast and i was <sighs> like this is bad conditions i'd not feel in this yeah luckily i burned off but yeah i was thinking about that the whole yeah, time scary it's scary so that was my weekend helicopters are cool mm-hmm. i will resist the urge to get my pilot's license though because i i understand why you do it's like when you first catch a wave surfing and you're yeah. like oh i get why people devote their lives to this like mm-hmm. this is an amazing feeling same deal with flying a helicopter or being in one uh but yeah i don't need that i do like a gyrocopter sort of situation what's that that's a little more dangerous (laughs) uh i guess it's kind of like a homemade helicopter (laughs) it's a super lightweight aircraft like i think they have counter rotating blades i think or some of them do some of them don't yeah you can like build it in your garage you don't really need like a pilot you don't even need a license i think to fly it because it's so lightweight a project copter yeah i don't think you need a project project copter so yeah that was it so it should be uh Get to some news. Yeah, let us know if you want to see us build a Harbor Freight helicopter. Uh, God. <laughs> I, I don't know. We'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> Before we get into the hard news today, I want to talk about these rumors about a new MR2 that were hinted in a promotional thing that Toyota did that was like an mm. anime. It was pretty cool. Uh, but someone zoomed into the like the board behind one of the characters. There's a bunch of little scribblings. Mm-hmm. Uh, it said MR2. Gen uh Gen Four MR two. Cool, cool. There's Celica on there. Something about a GT three car. So we've talked about the rumors of a new MR two coming out uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think now. And GT3, uh, this huh? is just more little Easter eggs that it might be in the works. Hmm. I think when it comes to GT three, if it is GT three, it probably would be that the um LFA kind of replacement, right. yes. that little squish looking guy. Yeah, because that we that's about. definitely. In the GT3. The hood on that uh, thing is insane. Neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Super long hood. Super cool looking. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Too bad I don't like anime. Mm. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> is that how they do it? Or they really, they just do it in a little anime? And that's the official way of leaking it? Um, It's just stoking the rumors. I think it's the East. Yeah. It's a little, little crumbs. Yeah. You know, a little bread mm, trail. Crumbs. And we're the geese <laughs> snapping it up until we fall into their box trap and then we get boiled and yeah. then served for thanksgiving boiled yeah. goose, <laughs> boiled goose. <laughs> all right well let's take a turn here down somber street southern california car enthusiasts got some pretty disappointing news irwindale speedway is closing for good on december 21st of this year um irwindale occupies a pretty special place in our heart yeah uh, right now you know we've been shooting all of our high low episodes out there at their eighth mile drag strip uh, we've also been out there plenty of times for Formula Drift, Irwindale, yep. usually the closing event of the year. Many events out there at the House of Drift. Night uh, of Destruction is super sick. Um, that was the first time I saw figure eight racing. And Truckzilla, which we were just talking about last, last week, week, actually. You mentioned Truckzilla. That's right. So despite only being in operation for 25 years, Irwindale managed to work itself into local legend status. That is crazy it's been around for only 25 years because it seems like something that's like... You know, your dad would be like, oh, I went to Irwindale in right. 57. Yeah. And- I think that's just because it's been the local track for us. Yeah. As long as I've lived in L.A. at least, it was like, oh, yeah, you want to go to a demo derby or like a little cool drift thing, go to Irwindale. Yeah. yeah. Um, so as I mentioned, it hosted Formula Drift, but also the Arkham Menard series and kicked off Power Tour West last year, which I wanted to go do, but the Imperial was not ready. Mm. Uh, more and more tracks, unfortunately, are closing nationwide. And a uh, little update, nearby Willow Springs is still for sale. Haven't really heard much on mm. that end of yeah. the uh, uh, news, but um, I, I feel really naive, honestly. When I heard the news last week, I was like, oh, shit, like, it actually is closing, you know? Um, I think, in especially in Irwindale's case, it seemed like every year, especially at FD, you'd hear about it being, like, the last FD Irwindale event. And then it'd pop up next year. And, you know, after seven years of hearing that, you're like, okay, so it's not actually happening now. Yeah. 
Um, and any sort of rumor you hear about it, you just kind of like blow off. But, uh, you know, they said it themselves. You know, it's not just a rumor. They they posted on their Instagram um, quite a lengthy statement about it. Um, we're going to look into it more as to why it really shut down or why it shut down in the first place. Um, we're going to be out there at the final uh, Thursday Night Thunder Test and Tune event. And then they're having their own kind of like closing event. They're having like a big celebration, having a ton of different type of racing out at the Oval. But I don't know. It's, it's like, bring your own homemade firework night. So, <laughs> it's be uh, sick. Yeah, it's, it, it, it is really sad, though. Yeah, my understanding is that the uh, Irwindale Speedway was purchased a couple of years ago by a big developer. There's plans that maybe do some sort of office complex mm-hmm. or... Uh, it's I mean, a huge yeah. chunk of land. I think, it, like, the situation kind of depends on who you talk to. I remember hearing, like, when I was first going to the track that, oh, they're going to build a mall. And then there's like some sort of geologic mm. survey and that the the soil or the 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 ground itself would be too unstable. If there's like an earthquake, the ball would sink into the ground or something like that. Which oh, liquefaction. Liquefaction, yes. Mm. Um, nice pull. Uh, <laughs> that's what happens when you get, get eloped. Vocabulary. Boom. Yeah, you, yeah. S- you scroll Reddit for a long time <laughs> when you get eloped. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, you know, we're gonna look into it though. We're gonna find out. Yeah, we're gonna have that story for I think you I, on the main channel. This is just me speculating, but it's a huge chunk of land. Um, gentrification moves east in LA. This is kind of east, so I think the land is becoming more valuable. If it's a uh, ca- venture capitalist company that bought it, um, mm-hmm. this is a write-off for them to close it. So I think it's just probably more commercially viable to shutter it yeah i mean if in all these cases where racetracks sell it's because it's just more valuable to be the land is more valuable than the operation that's going on right irwindale is middle of nowhere at least it was for a long time it's It's like an oil field or like quarries or yeah it's like a quarry town and so for a while irwindale was far enough outside of la where it's the sticks and it was Mm -hmm. cheap enough to build a racetrack there now there's tons of houses there there's neighborhoods and it's a pretty developed community so yeah a lot of land. Also, you know, it, it's all linked together. You know, like the f- the fact that there aren't that many affordable sports cars out there is related to this track. R- yeah, closing down. Like, there's not the expendable income for people to go racing, so they're not going to be able to support Irwindale Speedway as a business. So the owners of the business have to look elsewhere to make money, sure. and that might be selling off the land. You know, it's like it's not just taking place in a vacuum. Uh, no. Everything, so many it's- things that we've talked about both on this show, also over the years over on Wheelhouse and stuff, like it's just all connected. And I think it's indicative a, of the whole picture of mm-hmm. like the wealth gap as well because Absolutely. we're seeing we're seeing like the the uh, billion dollar track that just opened in Japan. Uh, thermal I was is say, yep. private. There's mansions, million dollar mansions there. Yep. It's just becoming like a huge rich guy sport. Absolutely. And all the public tracks are closing. Absolutely. Yeah. I 100% agree with you. So uh, Irwindale's legacy is going to live on 125 miles north at Kern Raceway in Bakersfield. All of the track's assets and events will be transferred there. Uh, that is oh. owned in part by Kevin Harvick. Um, so if you w- want to get your short track action, you got to go out to Baco now. Yeah. And let us know if you want us to interview Kevin Harvick because love that to. is on the slate. I would love to. Okay, I cool. want to. Got my vote. Big thank you to our sponsor this week, Yamaha. Guys, life is an adventure, and it's time to let more people in on the fun and share the journey. Introducing Yamaha's latest terrain-conquering side-by-side that combines class-leading power with maximum comfort and versatility. The all-new Wolverine R Max 4 1000 has ample room for four adult passengers. They better, four of me in there, that's a lot of room. Plus, plenty of cargo space so you can tackle new terrain. Expand your horizons and go further than ever before. Side by sides are pretty much roller coasters that you control. These things are super fun. If you've never ridden in a side by side or driven one, get down to your Yamaha dealer. Go for a little test drive. If possible, you won't regret it. Experience its capability at yamahamotorsports.com and see your local dealer today. Always protect the environment and wear your seatbelt, helmet, eye protection, and protective clothing. Read the owner's manual and product warning labels before operation. Honda boys fell to their knees in Taco Bell's nationwide last week, but in a good way. Honda Racing Corporation <laughs> announces launching a new line of performance parts for the street, track, 
and off-road use. The decision was made to begin selling performance parts following the hugely positive feedback Honda received from the Integra Type SHRC. They showcased at Monterey Car Week. We saw that, didn't we? You guys saw that. Not with my my eyes, but on pictures. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so if you guys don't know, Honda Racing Corporation, or HRC, is the performance division over at Honda. Uh, they originally started designing parts for Honda motorcycle racing back in the 80s. If you go on HRC's website, it's a ton of just motorcycle parts. Really cool. But Do they have those little mohawks that you put on top of your helmet? <laughs> yeah, they're actually uh, tested in a wind tunnel. They're optimized <laughs> for uh, the best possible wheelies. Uh <laughs> For when you're going down like Figueroa. Yeah. yeah. Super cool. So in 2022, HRC started making parts for all of Honda's racing efforts, including Formula One, IMSA, and off road competition. Uh, they also went by the name HPD, I think, here in the US, Honda Performance Development. I think uh, they have a vaccine for that now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you might have seen some civics out there with the HP, HPD. Uh, uh, emblem on it those have been tweaked to be even more sporty than the regular civic si so uh, honda usually relies on other companies to make performance parts like like uh, Mugen. spoon Mugen. spoon and Mugen, spoon and typically Mugen. Mugen. So this is kind of like the trd or the nismo maybe mm-hmm. for honda now yeah yeah cool uh i think it's pretty cool because you know imagine this you go to your local Honda dealer, you've yeah. got your Civic SI or uh, maybe your Type R, uh, Integra Type R, but you want to spice it up even more. You go to their parts department there. They're selling HRC parts. Maybe you got to pay them to install it to be under the warranty, mm-hmm. but that could be really beneficial instead of like buying something off the shelf, just not off the shelf, but ordering something online, installing it yourself, and then going to your dealer and then be like, dude, what did you do this thing? You yeah, messed this thing up. OEM performance parts are always a good thing. Yeah. Especially in a world where uh, Civic SIs and Type Rs are basically selling at R- R- MSRP used, mm-hmm. not a bad thing for resale. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Yeah, especially if mm-hmm. all that paperwork, the install being done by the dealership, mm-hmm. then you'd have modifications that won't necessarily impact the value of your car, right? One would surmise. One would hope. <laughs> well, dude, I'd- you know, you go online and you're like, lots of mods, too many to list. You're like... And who did those? Yeah. Did you do those in your garage? Yeah. I don't trust you. <laughs> How many rounded off bolts do you have on that thing? Yeah. You know? Totally. How many threads did you strip to put those if there's on? There's a list of HRC mods. I would feel way better yeah. than if it was like. With a certificate. Said, eBay hey, Turbo. Whatever. Tony down at Sunset Honda did this. And they're like, okay. No, look, he signed his name. Tony's name right there. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. HRC hasn't released really specifics of what they're going to offer yet. But if rivals like TRD or Nismo or anything to go off of, we can probably expect stuff like oil coolers, suspension, exhaust, and maybe <laughs> some forced induction, perhaps. Mm. Spicy intakes. Yeah, Spicy intakes. Factory fart cans. <laughs> <laughs> fart can from the factory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this thing's been farted out from the factory. <laughs> Boys, we had a spicy one in Sao Paulo Ooh, this weekend. Yeah. Mm. F1 season has been a roller coaster this year. Honestly, it started off looking pretty boring because Max yeah. Verstappen was walking away with it. But other teams have worked super hard to catch up to Red Bull, and it is paying off. McLaren and Ferrari actually racked up enough points to now be first and second, respectively, in the Constructors' Championship. Super surprising. Uh, Red Bull down there in third. Like there's something there's some there's multiple stories going on there at Red Bull. We'll get into it. Yeah. Going into Sao Paulo this past weekend, Lando Norris qualified on pole position as and was within 44 points of Max Verstappen for the drivers championship. So when you consider first place is worth 25 points and four races left, it was anyone's race. A lot of pressure on Lando Norris to take home the W. And he didn't handle it very well. No. <laughs> so he did not. Let's talk about it. Max Verstappen, starting in P17, Max managed to climb his way to victory over the weekend thanks to a combination of good driving, uh, opportune flags, and a, quote, free pit stop because of the red flag that happened midway through the race. Lando, unfortunately for him, finished P6. Now there's only three races left, and it looks like Verstappen might be safe again, but anything can happen. I mean, if he crashes or somehow DNFs and Lando wins it, then... Uh, more than once, 
then it's probable that Lando can – it's possible that he can win. Not I probable, think Max just has that dog in him, and he's not going to let anyone else win, though. No, I mean, Max is very, very talented, uh, even though, you know, I, I, I don't – I've said some unkind things, I think, about Max in the past, but, the, but you can't really It's stuff like this that you're like, it's undeniable that he's amazing. Oh, yeah. Because it's only – this has only happened four or five times, I think, in history of – Going from P seventeen to P one. Yeah, I mean, we've oh. seen the only person I can think of lately, someone like a Lewis Hamilton doing something like this. So, I mean, Max, especially in talent right now, like definitely in the same league as yeah. Lewis Hamilton. Those Lewis and Max are the only two people that like, even if they get uh, bumped down to like P twelve, P fourteen, whatever. There's that moment mm-hmm. where you see them and you're like, oh, they're going for first. Especially like, they're when- just balls to the wall mm-hmm. like getting through the pack easily mm-hmm. and and it's like uh undeniable that they're they're like putting everything towards absolutely it. that definitely kicks on when it rains now uh rainy weekend yesterday or rainy day Super yesterday rainy. in sao paulo uh led to a race that had a few stop stoppages a few slowdowns with uh caution laps uh safety cars there's a red flag in there I thought it was a super interesting race. I love, even though it was a bit tedious having to yeah. wait for so many, uh, you know, cars to be cleaned up off the track. Was interesting. It was interesting, but also it shifts the race from something where, like a dry race, yeah, you know, like you can, in a dry condition, you can kind of write off a driver's dominance just by like, okay, he's, yeah, he's a really great driver, but also has the best car. The rain definitely equalizes all that. But also, it's not just the equalization, it's also the mental toughness, I think, that comes into rain races like this where the event is uh you know spread out over yeah. multiple sessions basically you know they have to do multiple restarts like you have to get into all these different mental zones multiple times through the race and it takes grit to get to a place where you can win it rather than just kind of like being defeated by the conditions and the circumstances yeah. you know you also you can't see shit if you're not in first right uh, and then any like the hair line that you have to balance on for grip and spinning out is like even smaller. Mm -hmm. Like I think Carlos Sainz was like going into a mild turn when he spun out and it's like, Mm -hmm. I don't even know what he did wrong. Like maybe just press the brakes a little too hard, but anything spins you out. How wet do those dudes get? Like are the suits waterproof? Are they driving so fast that the water doesn't get in the cabin? I no, I mean they, it's raining yeah. in oh, into I think their open cabin. They get pretty pretty wet in there. Yeah. Yeah. Are there drain holes? I'm just like I would assume so. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I remember or before the the red flag ended, the drivers are getting in the car. There was a shot of I think uh Charles Leclerc getting into his car. And one guy, one of his um mechanics had like some of those like blue shop towels and he's like rubbing charles's feet his shoes to like make sure oh. they're like as dry as that possible so his feet point. don't slip off the pedals yeah. socks are probably all squishy i mean what does yeah. that oh, do to your acceleration exactly. but that's the thing is like to win in conditions like this is super impressive and just shows i think max's experience at this point you know he's been in the game now for a long time you know he's on his way to his fourth championship he's becoming not an elder statesman of the sport but um at least maybe in a prestige sense it's possible you know not age you know we have guys literally elder statesmen like yeah. botas alonzo hamilton now but just through his accomplishments you know i think if he wins four if he you know makes another run at it this year i could see max getting kind of bored and trying to want, maybe want to do something else at this point you well, know he, all, he is accomplished there's nothing else that he needs to prove i think he's also not getting preferential treatment by the stewards anymore and yeah because of that he all his fans think that he's getting screwed over every time he gets a penalty. And it's like, no, he's just getting the same treatment as everyone else. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta beat the refs. You yeah. Know? But I think the coolest part about this race was that the Alpine drivers got second and third. That was a very, that cool was moment. awesome. And Ocon went crazy on the radio. Yeah. Sounded like a freaking Disney character. He did. <laughs> great moment great moment for alpine uh they went from ninth place in the championship to now sixth place yeah that's so, so cool. cool in one race yeah very cool uh but also back to max real quick like his success you know that's why when you see uh people kind of downplaying it, it's like man like max is actually successful in spite of the rest of the team rather than because of it you know yeah 
this year we had the Horner allegations early before the season started. Checo just fell off a cliff. Yeah, we wanted, you know, you had Jos Verstappen, Max's dad, wanting to push Christian out because of those allegations. You had Adrian Newey announcing that he was leaving for Aston Martin. You know, there's also rumors that Helmut Marco would be leaving the team. And Verstappen, Max, actually had a clause in his contract that if Helmut leaves, then Max can leave. So, I mean, keeping... Helmet Marco was key to keeping Max. They were able to assign an extension for Helmet Marco. He's kind of like the uh, one of, another mastermind behind the scenes, yeah, uh, attracting drivers to the team. So very important. He's like the Dick Cheney of sure, yeah, yeah. Red he Bull. He is. He's the Dick Cheney of Red Bull. He really is. Uh, all the while, Christian Horner had no idea that Max had this clause in there. So I mean, all this shit has been going down with Red Bull this year, but Max is still thriving, and I think that shows a real. Um, I think that says a lot about his mentality behind the wheel. And uh, uh, Formula Dank people are uh, guessing that if it continues to be this like tumultuous team uh, conditions or whatever, that he might just go to a different form of racing, which he would possible. probably dominate. Probably. So, yeah, I, I thought it was a great, great race weekend. And, I mean, again, some crazy stuff has to happen for Max to – lose it it is his to lose but i think uh i think he's in the right zone mentally to make it happen for his Do you fourth. see that picture of um lance stroll and his sister uh like way too close and no like cuddled up no it's not <laughs> lance i mean he like beached it on the outlet oh my god like what is it? i'm over i'm over him I've, I've tried defending him yeah you have i don't know why uh, he's he's really disappointed me man yeah so yeah uh, just to close this out, you often hear from American racing fans that F1 is boring. And if you're used to spec series like NASCAR and IndyCar, F1's open formula can seem a bit topside sometimes since drivers can be dominant for years if they have the right car. But I don't know. I think races like this weekend show that it can be boring sometimes, but you will always have human drama like this weekend to make it super interesting. That is a strange <laughs> photo. <laughs> I don't know. Is it? Uh, is she his full sister? <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, if you are desperate for attention, but the Cybertruck is maybe just a little too run of the mill for you, yeah. there are currently 10 reproduction Batmobiles from the Dark Knight yeah. series Ooh. for sale right now. The what Tumblr. Are they? What's the Tumblr? I was like, yeah. the skitter? The Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> I know the, the skitter, skittery sound when it goes around. Oh, yeah. Turns. It <laughs> Got that got the big ass Whoa, tires. That was actually really good. <laughs> that was so good. Yeah. It was like a dolphin. Want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a joker, baby. <laughs> uh, so these uh, reproductions are officially licensed by Warner Brothers, and they are uh, you can buy one for $3 million. Uh, they are true to screen okay. replicas. Um, Warner Brothers also famously licensed Eleanor from Gone in 60 Seconds and. Uh, they were really uh, stringent about who could use that name. So yeah, I, I they guess repossessed the same. that YouTuber's car, right? Yeah, yeah BS for build, build mm -hmm. Chris, which is which is unfortunate. But in this case, uh, these Batmobiles are officially licensed, so you don't have to worry about that. To play devil's advocate here, <laughs> Dark Knight came out when two thousand seven, eight. Okay, so it's almost twenty years old at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's like if someone was selling like the Tim Burton Batmobiles for three million dollars. In like, yeah, and like those were like five years ago. Those are yeah. C four Corvettes. I know, but still, that seems like an insane amount of money for one of these things. But these are like fully built. I know, but they're not even street legal, right? Yeah. No. So here's the thing: they don't come with weapons, but yeah. uh, okay. and they're also missing the jet engines that would also be featured yeah. in this. And, I bet and, it can't turn into the the bat bike either. But they simulate the jet engines. Okay, I just don't know. Three million dollars. You could get a like you could get, you could get a, a Bugatti, yeah. You could get a Koenigsegg if you if you find a, a cheap enough one. I think eight, cheap. Eight of these are going to Dubai. Pa yeah. How many are they making? Ten. Yeah. They can't cost more than a million dollars to build. No, I doubt that. No, they're probably like six hundred thousand dollars to build. Mm. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So the specs on this thing are pretty crazy. It weighs over 5,500 pounds. It's driven by an LS3, which is the, uh, we have in the top spec 
LS? Not the LSX. Mm, no, the LSX. There's also bigger ones than that. Um, 523 horsepower coming out of that LS3. So I it doesn't seem that fast, but it's lighter than the new M5. <laughs> really? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> yeah, things heavy as hell, dude. Oh my god, that's insane. Um, I don't. I no, don't, I, don't I know. think that being said, the type of person who is buying this is the same type that bought a DeLorean like 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. millennials that uh, made a bunch of money on yep. crypto. Oh yeah, crypto bought, bro for sure. Crypto bro. Yeah, that's like. Well, probably that Jack Daughtry guy is gonna have one of these things. Jack Doherty. <laughs> Who are you saying? Who are you talking about? That guy that crashed the McLaren. That guy. Yeah, Jack oh. Doherty. Doherty. <laughs> he's more of a he's more of a pimp than a crypto bro. <laughs> okay, well your your pimps and your crypto <laughs> crypto crypto slime. Your crypto your crypto bros. I just yeah yeah. It's millennial guys. Who I mean, dude, I love the Arkham games. I love Batman. He was my favorite superhero. I'm still not gonna plop down three mil for this thing. It goes back to the disparity of wealth. That we were talking about earlier. Yeah, we need everybody to have one of these things. How much did it cost <laughs> Batman to build it? No, though? I don't think <laughs> that's what you're saying. No, dude. No, I don't think anyone no. should drive these around because people are going to put real guns on it. Yeah, uh, like when the CIA gave uh, a lot of different kind of like um, the death, cats, death squads, you know, in in many different countries, that much money to buy weapons, and yeah, you're the right. The CIA also spent. I think $9 million <laughs> trying to train cats to become assassins. <laughs> and then they let him outside and they just never saw him again. <laughs> Could have bought three Batmobiles. <laughs> oh, speaking of cats, I have an update on the cats that I was talking about oh, last yeah. week. Yeah. Uh, so there are six kittens that are uh, next door. Okay. And uh, Christine and I captured two of them yeah. so far because the other ones are a little difficult. So right. I've got two, two of these cats living in my place right nice. now. Uh, one, of them's, uh, one of them is named Goblin. And the other's name is Old Man Squimbo. Old Man Squimbo. And they're uh, they're pretty good. They cleaned up pretty nice. They're good cats. So nice. there's four more left if you're interested. DM me. Nice. Did anyone reach out? Okay, so <laughs> uh, no, but I got a DM from a woman that just said meow, and I think that might be related, but I'm not sure. <laughs> meow. That's cool. Oh, yeah. it might have been Catwoman wanting to learn more about these tumblers. <laughs> Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I like cats, Empire. but is there any news about rhinos or raptors? Oh, yes. So, I'm glad you mentioned that, Joe. Last week, two sweet new trucks dropped first up. The Ram 1500 RHO, or the Rhino. We previewed this guy a few months ago. This thing is replacing the outgoing TRX as Ram's F-150 Raptor competitor. Uh, and this thing is truly off-road ready. It has a whopping 13 inches of suspension travel in the front and 14 in inches of travel in yeah. the rear. Bill uh piece. Reservoir. Oh, what does, reservoir. Uh, what does our Ranger have, like, in terms of travel? I want to say in the rear we have 20 inches, I want to oh say. God, and God. the front we, I want to say 18. Oh, that's way more. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this thing also has 35s from the factory. Pretty good. I mean, ours has 37s. Mm. But, uh, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, ours is a race track. I don't this think most factory. of the Rhino owners are going to be doing the Baja 500, though. No, but it should be able to. As I've said, when we're talking about that Shelby a couple weeks ago, first of all, I want to apologize for being such a sanctimonious asshole when we talked about that. Like, oh, you know, yeah, I just did Baja, so I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't, um, but <laughs> I want to apologize to Shelby on that one. And so I will be less critical this time around, I promise. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this truck is super important for the brand. Um, the TRX, I think definitely the Halo car for Ram, obviously. You know, we have the Hellcats. They're on their way out. They're not being made anymore with that Hemi in there. because they're done? Of, done, done? I guess we got the last call, huh? Yep, they did the last call. That's yeah. that. Those are out. The V8's out. Uh, so it's really important that this truck, the RHO, uh, still has the same capabilities as a TRX. Um, and I'm pretty sure, I want to say it has like the same suspension setup as the old truck or similar suspension setup. It's like same body, same chassis and everything like that. It just has a different motor with the high output straight six. Yeah. Um, Hurricane. Hurricane. Yeah, the Hurricane. Twin, Turbo. Tur twin Turbskis. Uh, inline six what's there. The, what's the power on this again? It's it makes five. like 540 and then 500 uh, torques. Do we know yeah. what the tuning potential of this is yet? Because I could see this being like the, the starting block for somebody to just like slap some big ass turbos Absolutely. on there and crank it yeah. up. Yeah. I think you're totally right on that. So I don't know. I think this thing's pretty cool though. I think the price is great. 
Like I think I went on the configurator and I know it's going to be more than 69,000, but it starts at 69,000 uh, compared to the TRX is 98,000. Yeah. That was, this is where I think we're going to see a lot of these on the road. I hope which so. Makes me think that the suspension setup is a little less early it's than possible. the TRX. Maybe. I mean, the TRX looks huge. This yeah. looks like a normal Ram. That was my problem with the TRX is that it was, it's just super big. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, obviously, flannel wearing YouTuber living in West LA might not be the target audience for the TRX, so it doesn't really work for me. But why are no. you talking about Anthony Fantano? <laughs> he lives on the East Coast, very famously. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I don't know. The, they are definitely going for different markets. The Raptor and the T I mean, same segment, but different buyer. I think all the TRX owners I've ever met, which admittedly is very low number, just yoked tribal tattoo like ex-sheriff types that meme basically. of like the really veiny arm on the steering wheel that, yeah that must be from a trx uh, <laughs> owner um i mean max Raptor, turned into that guy when we had the mammoth 1000 yeah i turned into a bad man yeah, when so i was, was the wheel that. i looked over and max had white oakley's on and i was like what's going on i was chopping teslas i was smoking <laughs> yeah, kitties that thing was sick. now that was on 37s that truck mm -hmm. that yeah. was sick and that had crazy suspension too when we floored it like it would become Carolina squat. Yeah. It was really crazy. <laughs> what you want, baby. So, um, yeah, very interested to see this thing off road. Uh, I want to see it around town. I would love to drive one. Mm -hmm. I'm a big Dodge guy. We're all Mopar heads here. Yeah. We're honorary members of the brotherhood, I think. So I would Say love so. to get one of the, a press model. One of these things. Ooh, oh. maybe Ranger versus Rhino. Oh, oh. I consider mm. myself a member of the Step Brotherhood. The Step Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. You and Lance Stroll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the other side of the old truck spectrum, Kia has officially unveiled its long-awaited Tasman pickup. Tasman. Tasman. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> we previewed this thing a few months ago. It had like cool like art car kind of wrap on it when they did the concept car unveiling. But uh, this thing is now out in the open. Um, so let's tell you about its specs. Like I said, body on frame. Live rear axle, variety of powertrains, including a diesel. Wow. With a six-speed manual, that thing will never come to the U.S. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we're going to get any of these. It's possible possible not. So this thing has a tow rating of up to 7,716 pounds. I would imagine that's with the diesel, but that's pretty that's pretty impressive. That's cool. That's like a full-size truck. Uh, so straight from the factory, Kia says that it can uh, fjord 32 inches of water. <laughs> And it um, looks like shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, oh, man, we're looking at some pictures here. I'm going to try to describe this for the listeners. I would describe this as... It's a, a Roblox It's a Roblox Jeep Gladiator. I was going to say, it looks like a Jeep gl Gladiator wearing the skin of a Hyundai Santa Fe on it. Um, it is not handsome. It, it, it It's... Uh, it looks very modular. Uh, it looks. It's got this weird. Uh, it's really flat, ugly. It's really plastic ugly. cladding above the wheel wells. That, yeah, I think it's kind of reminiscent of a Cybertruck. I, I, I don't know. It's just, but they, it looks like one of those trucks that, like, if you're born and raised in the U.S. and you see a picture of like an Aust a truck that's only sold in Australia or only sold in Brazil, like it's very. Not American. This thing looks like it's only sold in like mine mid journey or something. It's like so <laughs> ugly. It's it's Minecraft not good. mid journey. It's not. I do like that the inside door handles are pretty sick. It's I will not, say look, that's my favorite part. I always try to like reserve judgment until I see a, a car in person because I do yeah. think that's just cars. Modern design does not lend itself well to photography for some reason. It's interesting. This is. It's it's got a big hill to climb, I think, in that respect. It's it's not good looking. It's interesting because Kia and Hyundai are making some interesting looking vehicles right yeah. now with the Vision seventy four concept. Yeah, and I like not just interesting but good looking cars. Yeah, I love the I, what is the Ionic five that boxy looking EV. I think is very cool, retro futuristic looking. Mm -hmm. What about the one that looks like a Beetle? The EV6, I think. Is oh yeah, the yeah, EV6 yeah. Six GT Ionic or something six. like Ionic six. I'm yeah, not a huge one. fan of that one. This is just like taking every bad modern truck trend to the extreme. Yeah. It's like minimalism, said, it's, but it's also like no, it's, there's too much going on. It's maximalism. It's like, hey, we're Kia making a pickup, so it better be like beefy and badass. And 
it's just but so okay i think the good version of this trend is the new gx yes the lexus like the boxiness even the defender i it took me a while to get into how like the, defender. the defender looks but now i really like it i actually saw a slammed one mm. on instagram and it looked Ooh. crazy but cool i think they're going for the minimalist uh cyber truck interior it's, yeah but it's it doesn't work with the outside and the outside looks like it's just cobbled together from a bunch of plastic. It's certainly something. It's a lot of swings. None <laughs> of them are really landing. Yeah. Just like Aaron Judge in the postseason. Yeah. Oh, gonna... awaken the beast. And then he strikes out seven times. I was going to say Shohei also. <laughs> yeah. Too high. Uh, not untrue. Yeah. So, okay. Let's, if we're going with analogies, Freddie Freeman is the <laughs> GX. Yes. Aaron Judge is the Kia Tasman. And then who's the rhino? Kike Hernandez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You guys get it? Yeah. Good. Yeah. So like we said, a lot of outlets are comparing the Kia Tasman to the Jeep Gladiator. It has a similar footprint and towing capabilities, but you'll be able to spec it out as a single cab with some pretty frugal engines and a manual transmission. That's pretty cool. You can't do that with the Gladiator. So this does make us hopeful that there might be more of a return to the basic utility trucks of old, like old Ford Rangers or Chevy S10s out there. In the Road and Track article, they showed it specced out in a couple couple different configurations. One of them is just the basic one. Then there's like a tray, mm, the tray version Aussie, that yeah. you know is going to go to Australia. Justin like that. Yeah. Justin loved trays. Justin loved trays. Justin loved trays. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's one that has a big either toolbox or camping thing on the back that I can't figure out, but it's a quad cab. Mm. And then <laughs> it leaves like two feet of bed space. And mm-hmm. then there's just like this gigantic container. And I can't figure out what it is. Interesting. Maybe for sleeping. A sleep cube. <laughs> yeah. Sleep cube. Sleep cube. Oh, I've got you. Have you got your cube? It's in the tray. <laughs> <laughs> I'm catching zeds in the cube. <laughs> <laughs> Catching some Zeds, dude. So there is a catch for the Tasman, gentlemen. It has not been confirmed for the U.S. Yeah. yet. Oh, yeah, no, duh. I figured. <laughs> well, they have, Hyundai has a Santa Cruz. That is not a body on frame truck, but I've seen a fair, not sorry. Yeah, it is a Santa Cruz. I That's see those called. everywhere and they yeah. still look pretty goofy to me. I like them. I think they're interesting. They're kind of in the same class as like a Maverick. This thing would be in the full size truck class. So maybe they're just kind of timid to take a roll of the dice. They'll probably do the same thing Ford did with the Ranger. It's like test it in foreign markets, make sure it's like bulletproof there, and then bring it to the U.S. if they feel like mm. taking a swing. It better be bulletproof if it comes to the U.S. Well, I mean, also, Kia has a real chance of undercutting American manufacturers. American trucks are so expensive for what you get. Yeah. Even like a base model truck with no, no features is like thirty seven grand. And that's pretty expensive. So if you could bring like a, a a fleet, like a fleet truck or something like that, very bare bones truck for people that just want to like haul stuff around or do work with it, bring it to market for $30,000, truly, like that's pretty compelling. But yeah. we'll see what happens. Oh, what what does a base F-150 go for? That's what, like 35 grand. Really? Yeah. Man. Very expensive. And that's for like, yeah, you get nothing. You don't even get a ball cooler. You don't even get a ball cooler, Max. Mm-hmm. Bring back the ball chiller. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've been saying. <laughs> so, <laughs> so before we head out, we wanted to uh, say that we know there are a ton of awesome previews for the SEMA show announced this week. Uh, and we're going to be getting to, into all of those next week because we are actually going to SEMA. We are leaving tomorrow. Stay tuned for that episode. Max, what are you driving out there? I am driving the new Bentley Continental GT Speed Hybrid, cool. which is a $400,000 uh, V8 hybrid. Nice. And wow. I will be rolling in a Silverado EV Max range model, which we have been assured has enough range to get to LA to Vegas. Should be fine. Should be comfortable. But I will definitely want to drive that Bentley back. You're going to like it. Okay. You're going like, to like it. You're going to like the way your ass feels in those seats. Yeah, I'll be taking care of a baby incontinental <laughs> this weekend. An incontinent baby? <laughs> Is that what you said? 
Yeah, he, he, he wears a diaper. He shits oh. his pants. Yeah. <laughs> Incontinental. Gotcha. <laughs> so, follow Joe at Joe G. Weber. Follow Max at Max Max. Follow me at Nolan J. Sykes. Follow Donut Podcasts at Donut Podcasts. Uh, like and subscribe if you like what we're doing here. Make sure to get yourself a bottle of Donut Real Mechanic Scrub. This thing, this stuff's good. It smells amazing. It works really well. I don't even wear gloves in the shop anymore. You can get this at Walmart or online at dotamedia.com. We are super proud of this stuff. For like a year, you know, little sample bottles would show up in the office and be like, hmm, this feels a little too gritty. This feels too gritty. Um, This doesn't smell good. And we really have a product here that we're, a soap that we're really proud of. So go get yourself some real mechanic scrub. And uh, big thank you to the crew. We got Edgar Grajeda, Audrey Holden, Mark Schroeder. And uh, thank you for listening. We will see you next week with our SEMA News Breakdown. SEMA News Breakdown.